Good morning, this is Kai Viola coming at you with another video, Coffee and Jesus. Here we go. So, for years, just even living in this world, and even encountering Jesus as special in the Bible, there has always been a continual frustration. Knowing what the Word of God says and knowing how broken this world is, we are called to be living at such a higher standard than I believe we are. Because God is a high standard. God is a holy God. And he is so, so good and gracious. He's so merciful. He's so awesome. That no matter what mistakes and no matter what sin in the past, he forgives you by the blood of Jesus. But that doesn't give us the ability to continue sin. Or take advantage of his grace. But we should seek our Father to mature and be better every single day because it says also in the scriptures that we are being renewed from glory to glory this is what it's like to live in this walk with the lord he wants to renew us every single day but it, it requires a, a, an engagement with him as well and making room in your heart for him and receiving him and seeking him ask and you will receive seek and you'll find knock and the door will be open so the door will be open if you knock but if you're not knocking the door won't be opened so you have to allow God to come into your heart by seeking him and asking him and knocking on his door. And God, I believe, has so much for us because Jesus says, I came to give life and life more abundant. We should be living in more abundant life. So God is all about blessing and giving abundant life. But he also wants us to repent. So turn away from sin and to seek his face. Because sin is death, but in the Spirit is life. The Holy Spirit is life. The Holy Spirit wants to do so much in you, and we just have to receive from Him. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now. I just pray for receiving of your Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Just baptize us in your Spirit, because where the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. And I just declare freedom on all of us. I plead the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. We repent of our sins. We turn to you for guidance, for wisdom, for revelation. And I thank you that you love us so much, that you loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son to give us eternal life for those who believe. And we believe in you right now in Jesus' name. So as a believer, we are children of the Most High God. And Jesus also, in this life, we are given the keys to bind and loose the things of heaven and earth. We're the ones in authority because Jesus is an authority. All creation has been given to Jesus and Jesus gives us the keys to bind and loose the things of heaven and earth. So that's why a prayer life is so key because we release things from heaven. We literally, our prayers are like a key to open the door to heaven and Jesus is that door and that comes through our relationship with him and it opens up heaven. And so it's really key to have a prayer life because they, these are keys. We can open up heaven and release things where we've been given the authority to. And so that's what I mean by living at a higher standard, because a lot of times people don't even have that engaging prayer life that we could have. We could be praying 24 seven. I pray practically every single day. I need it. I need to declare some things and I just continually pray for God's guidance. And we also need to just humble ourselves before the Lord. So there's something about um, even what we think in our mind. So we think we're right in our own opinion. That's scripture too. We can have all sorts of different kinds of thoughts. We need our mind to be renewed by the word of God, by the spirit of God. We need God to reveal things to us. So we have to ask God, God, what do you want to reveal to me today? And just seek him and you'll be amazed at how much he wants to reveal. So I feel led to also read Proverbs, um, Romans chapter 12. Because I believe this is um, key in our life for living in the Lord. So chapter 12 in the Passion Translation, it says this. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices. So living sacrifice as like a surrendering of your life to him. And he's, and Paul says, and live in holiness. 
So that these are instructions. We're supposed to live in holiness. And it's through, through him, by him, because of him, experiencing all that delights in his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. So we actually worship God by the example of our life. Living in holiness and doing what pleases him. And this I quote all the time, but in the Passion Translation puts it this way. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. So the culture of today, and you can just scroll through social media, you got opinion after opinion after opinion, all sorts of cultural values, whatever the world thinks. I understand like there's points all across the board, but Paul takes it another notch, a higher notch, an elevated notch, is from kingdom of God perspective. Not to be conformed by the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And as a passion translation, not Im to imitate the ideas and uh, ideals and culture of the world around you, but be transformed by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is also the spirit of truth. And the Holy Spirit reveals truth that is way beyond what the world can even offer. And this will empower you to discern. So we need discernment, God's will, as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. So this is our calling. We're to live a beautiful life that's pleasing to God, as satisfying to him, to satisfy to us with a transformed mind by the power of the Holy Spirit. And not to be imitating the ideals and culture around us. We have to take it another notch. To continue, God 